Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Chats with Nat. This is episode four, titled Nothing to Fear. Today we're going to be talking about fear and faith and how real both of those are in our life. And I think it's so important to be talking about fear today because look at what's going on in our world today. And even put that aside, I don't know, maybe something is going on in your life right now that you are just carrying this weight of fear. And I just think God, well, I know God does not want us to be living in fear. All right. This bondage of fear is what the enemy wants to weigh us down with. And we kind of want to talk about today how we can live without fear no matter what it is, and we can live by faith. And I think it's just important to talk about fear right now because fear is a very real and powerful emotion. It's something that we have all felt um, in our lifetime to one degree or another. Um, It causes people to act in such a way that is unrecognizable to maybe their family, their friends, and eventually even themselves. It kind of uh, just turns you into this, this different person that is not you, it is not your identity. Um, And it keeps people um, from taking action um, because it causes them to live with a lot of doubt inside of them, whether um, it's about your business, your job, um, selling your home, buying a home, um, a health scare, whatever. a lot of doubt can trap us in this fear emotion and the enemy wants to use fear as a weapon against us to steal us from the blessing God has given us. So if the enemy knows that he can trap you in fear, he wants to keep you from the blessing God has for you. Like that is so serious guys. Like imagine walking in this fear your whole life versus living in this blessing that God has for you. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to live in? Now, I know it's super easy to fall into living in fear because mm-hmm. we're human, um, but it's about rising above that and living above that and thinking about what God's word says. Mm-hmm. And through Christ, our lives can be full of power, love, and display self-control. And there's going to be some scripture that we talk about today that covers that. And I think that's so important to meditate on because if we really meditate on that, we're going to live differently and we're not going to let that fear creep in to our lives. It's easier said than done, but I truly believe if we know what God says, we'll know how to live. Preach. Yes. That's great. Holy Spirit was all over that. Joshua 1, 1 through 9. So um, if you are listening today and you're kind of new to the whole Jesus movement, then maybe you haven't heard this passage a whole bunch, but I feel like if you have been in the church or around the church for a while, you probably have heard this. Don't you feel like, Rach, it's been preached upon like kind of a lot in a lot of different circles, and I feel like people we'll take different angles like with this passage and, you know, make it say whatever they sort of want it to say. But I just want us to really come today in this episode, um, me and Rach and then whoever is joining in, listening, watching with us and just try and really hear what God is saying to Joshua, just with a lot of humility and openness, you know, of not having preconceived ideas of like, oh, yeah, 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 I know what this says, you know, but just to approach it with that sense of freshness, because it's the word of God, and there's so much power in just hearing what he has to say. This is where God is going to commission Joshua. Verse one starts out, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, The Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. So this is kind of after first five books, the whole exile from Egypt with Israelites, the whole situation. So they're not to the land yet. Um, Moses, my servant, is dead. This is God talking. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the lands that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. 
every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And we have all heard... Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I don't know how many times I've heard that growing up, but quite a few times, and it was very encouraging, you know, when I wasn't going through things that were stressful or caused me anxiety in my life, you know, when all was going right, I agreed with that, you know, <laughs> yeah. but then when I was kind of down in the valley and experiencing um, these not so happy things, yeah, I had to really turn to the Bible and really start believing that because that's kind of what helped me get through my fear and my anxiety and my stress. And Nat, can you think of a time in your life where you were kind of living in fear to one point, to one extent, and this verse and this kind of idea, this command that God has given helped you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think any time we're encountering change in our life because it's a new season or something is unexpected or unknown you know it's like understanding that God is with us in it you know um so yeah I mean I can think of times throughout my life and just having to maybe um like even with like confronting people or having hard conversations that have to be had, we understand that Jesus is with us and all of that. And I think even in terms of just letting all of our expectations go of this current calendar year of 2020 that we're existing in. And I mean, just everything that is happening, um, in the world and in our nation, you know, and in ways that that impacts our daily lives, like not having, not having you at my wedding because, you know, the virus wouldn't allow for that and still wanting to move forward and be obedient to the timeline that the Lord had presented to us. Um, it's, it's not like I was being, commissioned to lead the Israelites into the promised land, but it was like a situation where I just didn't know what was going on. And there's still currently so much up and down with, okay, we want to have this um, delayed celebration with our families and, you know, you guys that were supposed to be in the wedding and all of these things. And it's still just kind of like, well, we don't know what do we actually know is going to happen, you know? And so in that, we just have to rest in understanding that the Lord's ways are higher <laughs> than ours, you know? And so it's been cool. I, I feel like um, throughout this whole season, I've kind of learned how to still let myself 
be human when he's taught me to not hold on to the expectations that mm. are fleeting and uncertain and to really 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 just hold on to like the promises laid out here where he says so i will be with you i will not leave you or forsake you no matter what you know it's kind of comical the lord says be strong and courageous three times in the span of like five verses <laughs> in the tail end of this passage you know it's like he's trying in such a lovingly fatherly type of way it's like he's trying to drill into our little tiny pea-sized human brains i need you to be strong and courageous and do not be dismayed or terrified and it's kind of back to the point you were making rach about oh it's so much easier to digest this whenever we're in an easier more simpler season because it's like of course he's with me i'm just flowing you know breezing on through but the reason that God would need to bring up how to counteract our anxiety is because he knows that it is a very real thing that we're going to deal with. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's not to be condemned or feel like lesser than whenever situations in our life do make us fearful or, you know, confused. Jesus's Hebrew name is Yeshua, which sounds a lot like Joshua, when you say them like together. And so Yeshua, Jesus's name in Hebrew, before we made it this weird Jesus word in English, like literally means salvation. And so his name literally means like, okay, he is the promised one that is called out in all of these Old Testament scriptures. And even though this isn't prophecy per se, I feel like when you read it with that lens of already having been brought into communion with Jesus, we read, so I will be with you. And immediately it makes me think of Christmas because I'm like, oh wait, Jesus literally came, you know what I mean? To be Emmanuel, God with us. And though he's not still with us in physical form, he made it very clear that he was leaving with us a helper who is the Holy Spirit. So in that way, he still is actually really with us, you know? Oh, I love that, Matt. I didn't really put two and two together like that um, exactly, but that's, that's a really neat way to think about it. And just like with your situation and like what's going on, I'm sure a lot of girls um, can relate to your, to your situation and it is definitely upsetting and it's a situation that can cause a lot of fear in a lot of people because, hey, that's their wedding day and that's the day that they we're looking forward to since they were a little girl. But Nat, you took another approach that not a lot of people maybe today are maybe strong enough to do. And that is having the faith that God has you and has this whole situation under control when it doesn't look like it is. And I truly believe that is a gift of faith because without it, I feel like even though it is very upsetting and it's you know, what's gone on is not ideal for you and for Andrew. <clears throat> At the end of the day, you guys are married now. And um, what a blessing that is. And I feel like you have found some sort of contentment in this season. Um, and I really feel like that's just the Lord um, helping you guys through it. And he knows, he knows your hearts and he knows how upsetting and not ideal it is but also he's not having you dwell in it he's not having you you know be depressed all day every day about it and not live your life you know mm -hmm. and I just think that's really inspiring to just see how you guys have approached the season in your life and I truly believe because of your faith God's gonna bless that and he already has like you guys are so happy already. And what, how, how many months have you been married? Like two? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> yes, that's wonderful. Like, that's awesome. And while we pray for this celebration that's going to happen, we're going to have the gift of faith that it's going to happen in August. Um, so all of your friends and family can celebrate you guys. Like, I think that's what we need to lean on. And I think more people need to have faith and have that positivity going into these 
fearful situations because if you're not careful approaching a situation and dwelling in it and being fearful of it and having that anxiety and stress of it, it's not going to be fruitful. Nothing good's going to happen. What's going to happen is, I don't know, the enemy's just going to have more of a foothold into your life and you're not going to appreciate what actually is going on or what actually could happen. Um, Mm -hmm. So I just... I applaud you guys because that's just, it's amazing how you guys have approached this whole situation. Like I got married last year and I can't even picture myself going through what you guys have. So it's just, you guys are a beautiful example of having the love for each other, having the love for God and just having this crazy strong faith. So love you guys um, for that and for being that example. Let's go ahead and jump into another piece of scripture here. And this is 2 Timothy 1, 7. Mm -hmm. And this might be a familiar verse for you guys. You may have heard this verse at one point or another. And it's talking about what God has given us as believers. I was like you. I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard this part of it so many times. Yeah. But I'm going to read like 3 through 7 because I think it's cool to hear like, yeah, the context that Paul is coming from. So it's like the second letter that Paul has written to Timothy and the church he's with. So he says, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. I was thinking about how in college I would always call out the gift of faith in you because um, God has given me the gift of encouragement and um, wisdom, I think. And I think he's given you like a lot of faith and discernment. And um, I just think it's so crazy even how you were literally saying just now, I mean, how you see that in me and Andrew in this season. But, um, I mean, in all of us, once we've been brought into the family of God in Jesus's kingdom, he's saying, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. And he's speaking of the spirit, the gift of God being the spirit of power and love and Mm self-control is what he's saying. And so it's kind of like he's, reminding Timothy if you're feeling a spirit of fear just to remind you that is not not from God and I mean it might be coming from your own human flesh really a lot of times I think that's rooted in evil and like the devil's actual work whenever like fear manifests itself to a certain point but I just love how point blank he is about it and saying God didn't give you that. Like, remember the gift God gave you of power and of love and of self-control. And then he's saying, uh, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame. So basically, like, live into it. Like, let that actually be a reality in your life. I think it's super important to first um, take all of your thoughts captive, you know, like that's where you kind of need to start because that's where the enemy can easily do some damage with your thoughts and what you decide to believe and what you decide to think about yourself about a situation. So definitely keeping those thoughts captive. And I also think that's why it's so important to live in community because you need people to hold you accountable. Having, you know, strong friendship, strong community Um, behind you, beside you, that's what's going to help you, I believe, grow in your faith and truly live out the blessing and the, just the plan that God has for you. And, um, 
in order to do that, like I said, you need to have that community behind you, beside you, because if you didn't and you isolate yourself and you start believing your thoughts um, and not so good thoughts, then where are you going to go? What, what are you going to start thinking? How are you going to start living your life? Mm -hmm. And I believe you won't live it with power and with love and with self-control because once you start believing one lie, you're going to start believing all the different lies that the enemy is going to try and throw at you. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's super important in helping me walk in faith every day is, okay, maybe this um, lie has come, you know, inside, but okay, no, I do know the truth. Let me talk about this with God. Let me go to his word. Let me talk about this with my husband, with a friend. And, um, I'm back on the right path again. You know, I know I'm reminded of, um, that God has given me power, that he's given me love and self-control over that thought, that lie that's irrelevant now. It's kind of like joy, you know, it's like, a gift, but it's also a discipline that we're called to live into, you know, despite what's around us. It's kind of like, what, what are you looking at? You know, are you taking your time mm. to, you know, lament the things that should be mourned while still having that sense of joy? And so, yeah, I think fanning, fanning all of this into flame, um, I think it's really, I would echo everything you said, Rach, in terms of our individual relation, the way we relate to God and really prioritizing that prayer with him. And for me, I feel like the best flow I get into with my prayers with God is really just responding to him from his word, mm -hmm. because that is how he speaks to us is in his scriptures and it's not just an old archaic book of words. Like whenever you're actually living in communion with the Holy spirit, I promise you guys, like it's a whole different thing <laughs> whenever you actually welcome the Holy spirit into that experience and say like, okay, I want to hear what you're saying to me right now, you know, and there's patience in that. Like, the word of God never comes back void. So sometimes, I feel like sometimes you can be reading something and it's an, an immediate, precise answer, you know what I mean, to a specific thing that you've been grappling with. And other times, the Lord is really just asking you to very simply trust him mm -hmm. because he is a good father and he knows what he's doing despite all of the messy junk it, that is happening in the world in this like in this season of time so I think it's yeah like choosing to trust him prioritizing your relationship with him but not at all neglecting the community aspect like you were talking about Rach because there's a reason that God wasn't just like okay, everyone just sort of like choose your own spirituality and just let it be an individual thing and whatever. <laughs> like God had intention and purpose in creating the body of Christ, which indicates that one part is supporting slash like dependent upon the other parts working, you know? And so it's like our body wouldn't be working right now if our brain and our heart wasn't working and so jesus is the head of all of us mm. we are the body of christ and he's building his church and yeah you can see so clearly how the power i would almost argue like the power that we've been gifted with it's already in us like the same spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead lives in us right but I feel like it is more fully realized when you're in a communal worship, like body of Christ whole within the local church serving with a body of believers. I feel like the power and the love, because love requires more than one, and then self-control, like that accountability aspect like you were talking about. I feel like those are all fully realized when we are together as 
as God's family. Let's go ahead and dive into the last scripture for today. And this is Psalm 111. And I think the Psalms are just so comforting to me and so encouraging, especially during times where I am stressed or anxious. Um, I read a Psalm and I just feel a lot better. (laughs) There's a lot of wonderful instruction and encouragement in them. And so we're going to read Psalm 111 today. Great are the Lord's works. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The Lord of The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. I feel like I could meditate on it, like, forever, but um, I just see, I see these themes of the Lord's provision, um, not just physically, but spiritually, you know. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. So even when, like in Joshua, when when he's having to continue to lead the Israelites, like they probably would have been there already if they had actually listened and obeyed the Lord. So it's like you see you see that continual constant pursuit of Mm -hmm. God being like, No, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this covenant together because you guys keep straying off and worshiping golden calves and doing all of this nonsense that I didn't command you to do. And he's still like, I'm going to love you. I'm going to be constant and persistent in that pursuit. He shows us his power, which ties into um, the reminder in second Timothy that we just talked about of living into that spirit of power, which starts with just remembering that it's been given to us his works are established forever and ever he sent redemption to his people i think about how this is speaking to the ultimate redemption to come at this point because the father sending us jesus was him finally sending like a lasting eternal redemption for for us, you know, yeah. to redeem our souls and safety um, from death and sending us Jesus to be our Emmanuel, our God with us, fully God, fully man, to bear all of these burdens and brokenness and separation from God for us um, to restore us and redeem us in every single way i mean he has saved us from death which i feel like you could say is the the ultimate manifestation of pretty much any kind of fear Mm -hmm. so if he has jesus has defeated death once and for all on the cross and defeated the power that sin once had over us then really with that, he's taking care of every single other fear. I know our lives are busy, but I really, like Nat was saying earlier, like prioritizing our relationship with God. And I really think trying to carve out those times early in the morning before your day starts to just kind of walk yourself through the gospel story and what that is and be reminded of it. Because yes, we know it, but, or maybe you don't. And I encourage you to go ahead and read your Bible and learn all about it. And we're here for you if you have any questions. But I think it's so easy to also forget about it sometimes when life happens. 
And so I feel like if you start your day, you know, feeding yourself the gospel story, you're automatically defeating the enemy for the day because you're reminded of what God did for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's just a wonderful action step and I encourage you to try that, um, today, tomorrow, um, as soon as possible. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but let's go ahead and wrap up this episode. And I actually have a couple action steps for you guys today. So if you want, you can go ahead and write these down. I'll also include them in the description of the video, but some action steps to take away from today's episode is to ask God to help you get over your fear of what is holding you back. Second action step, write down your fear so you can see it. Eventually, each time you look at it, you will realize how much smaller your fear is than God. Mm. I'm a very visual person, so I need to see things. I need to look at it. And so if I write down what I am fearing, Over time, the more and more I pray to God to lift this fear off of me, I'm going to look at that eventually and be like, he he already took care of this. Why did I even fear this in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know, I had no room to fear this little thing Mm -hmm. um, because that's what it is to God. It's, It's a very little thing. So I encourage you to write it down so you can see it. The third action step is to pray every day for five minutes for God to give you wisdom about your situation. Read a psalm, name your fear and prayer, and move with confidence. So we just read Psalm 111 today. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, pick any psalm in the Bible, okay? Read it, name your fear in prayer, and move with confidence. This is prioritizing your relationship with God, and I truly believe if you do this every day, you're going to see a difference in yourself. You're going to see a difference in how you approach these stressful situations you might be in right now. And go ahead and let us know um, if you go ahead and try these action steps, the difference that you see in your life. Oh, Holy Father, we just thank you so, 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 so much for this time and uh, this freedom that you have brought us into to come together and get a little bit closer to you, God, and more confident in who you are and therefore who, um, who we are um, in you, Jesus. Um, I thank you for giving us identity that is not based on our performance or feeling put together all of the time, but that we know that we are free and that we are daughters of the king or sons of the king and we have been brought into this royal priesthood this family that um is a kingdom who could never ever be shaken god um i just thank you for your power um that you show us and your works like in psalm 111 that we read your faithfulness being established forever and ever, God. I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of self-control. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to recognize um, what is in us already um, as believers, Lord, and your promise of being with us that you have spoken over us as well. and pray for anybody listening that does not yet know you, Lord, that they would recognize your invitation just to call out upon your name, Jesus, and to be saved and to be brought in to this marvelous family of God that is so diverse and so beautiful in the way that you have designed all of us to come together, God, um, and We praise you for your love and your comfort, and we just want your name to be famous and known, and we glorify you, Jesus, and amen. Amen. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like we've been talking about almost every episode, we are meant to do life with each other, and we are just so thankful for this little community that we have already started with Chats with Nat. We thank you so much for your support, 
And I think I said it in the last episode, but we are going to be starting an Instagram account. And so be on the lookout for that. And we are very excited about that. Yeah, so be on the lookout for that. We will be sharing quotes and scripture and highlighted show notes and all of that good stuff. So be on the lookout for that. And like always, if you would like to reach out to us, our Instagram handles are below. But until next episode, we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful rest of your week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.